Hello friends, welcome to another video on my YouTube channel and in today's video you will learn how to create an appointment scheduling agent on Dialogflow ES. You will learn how to create a Node.js Express backend so that the Dialogflow agent can interact with the outside world and create appointment into Google Calendar. You will learn all the steps that needed to build this application end to end. We will look into how to set up Google Calendar as well. And finally, if time permits, we will also learn how to deploy the same application on render so that your agent can work always. So without further ado, let's get started. In order to follow the tutorial, you will need the following things. First, you need to have account with Google Dialogflow Essential. You can use your Gmail account to do that. Then you should create account with GCP uh, platform. And in GCP, you can use the same Gmail that you have used for Dialogflow ES. Once you do that, you need to go to IAM and admin. Then here under service account option, you create a service account, give it a name, continue, then select a role. Here I suggest you go to basic and then owner role, then continue. And then finally you hit done. It will create a service account. Once the service account is created, you will see it like this. And then from this uh, three vertical dots, you go to manage keys and click on add key, create new key, uh, select the JSON and create. It will download a JSON service account credential. Keep in mind that this credential are sensitive information, so you don't share it you know, anywhere unless you trust the person or the place where you share it. So once you do that, you need to go to again this hamburger icon and then API and services, enable API and services. We are going to use Google Calendar to store our events. So in order to use that, we need to enable API of Google Calendar so you need to search calendar here. Oh. Calendar. Yeah. And then choose Google Calendar API. Click on that and hit enable. Since it is enable, it's showing manage, but you need to click on enable if it is not enabled already. Finally, we have this uh, service account credential downloaded with us. Uh, I will show it, but you know, you don't have to worry about it. I will dispose this after the recording of this video. So if you look here, you will have this client email. So you need to copy the client email. Then go to Google Calendar, create a new calendar from this plus button i already have one client demo so click on this three vertical dot and then settings and sharing and if you go down here you will see that there is add people and group you click on that uh, provide your email address and then choose make changes and manage sharing uh, if you don't want to choose that you can go with make changes to event but i usually choose this uh, make changes and may manage sharing once you do do that you will see that your uh, service account email is added here and finally you need to get the calendar id uh, from the down section of the setting once you get that uh, keep it at a secure place uh, we will need it so i guess the setup is complete from uh, GCP uh, dialog flow and Google Calendar side. So now let's look into the flow how we gonna build this. 
So this is the flow of our agent where user starts the conversation with hi and we reply, how can I help you? So when user says schedule an appointment or help me book an appointment, we'll say that sure, I can help you with that. Uh, may I know your name? Then user will provide the name and you know, bot will reply that, okay, hi Raj, uh, what is your best email so that we can reach to you? So user provides the email, then the bot will reply with that. Is there, you know, anything, a note that you want to add to this meeting? So there is a two possibilities now. User will say no or user will say yes. So when user say yes, we will say that uh, uh, provide the note. So user provides the note and will say that thank you. Uh, your appointment is scheduled and is there anything I can help you with? In case uh, if user has said no, I will say that thank you, uh, your appointment is scheduled and is there anything I can help you with and we will again check for the user's response. If user say no, we will say thank you and have a nice day. If user say yes, then we will say how can I help you today. Now here you need to understand that uh, let's say you have certain FAQs attached to the boat. So when user says like what's your opening or closing hours? So that intent will fire and user will get response from that intent. But when user goes into this route, uh, it completes the appointment part. So let's get started with the dialogue flow part. So here I have a single. So here I have a dialogue flow agent, plain dialogue flow agent. It is like when you have clicked on this uh, create new agent button. Uh, there is nothing. So if I say hi here, you will see a response is coming from default welcome intent. And if I say something that the board doesn't understand, the response will come from default fallback intent. And it's, I guess, my bad. I now realize that I did not, you know, mention this part. Uh, in order to follow the whole end-to-end -end tutorial, I assume that you have some kind of prior knowledge with dialogue flow essential you know you know intent and uh, context and stuff like that but in case you are totally new i guess this tutorial can be uh, overkill for you so i suggest you to you know watch some basic videos about dialogue flow yes and then watch this uh, i have some you know uh, introductory video on google dialogue flow essential as well so now we will look into this and we'll build our application. So you can see that we need an intent for uh, understanding uh, users intent about scheduling appointment, uh, capture a name, uh, capture email, uh, confirm note or deny note, and then confirm further assistant and deny further assistant. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's build those one by one, let's say, uh, the first one is user uh, wants to schedule an appointment. I usually give name to the intent in a way that, you know, I can verify that. So now if you look here, uh, when user wants to schedule an appointment, the next thing we want to fire is the name capturing intent. So I will add a context to it, output context say, saying await, let's say name and I'll give lifespan of one. So the lifespan means uh, the context will live for this much lifespan. And let's say the training phrases will be uh, schedule an appointment, help, uh, help me schedule an appointment uh, schedule an appointment appointment for me mm, book an appointment I need an appointment Okay, and uh, the response will be, um, let me copy this. 
okay so let me copy this sure i can help you with that may i know your name and i'll save this okay so the next is user provides name so we are here user provides name so we will await the context name the next thing uh, we want to uh, fire is email so i'll say await hyphen email i'll give a lifespan of one and i'll say this is raj my name is raj it it is raj let's say raj i am raj okay so this uh, raj is extracted by you know system default person and we can get the person and we'll say that thank you and we can use it using dollar person dot name what is the best email to reach you okay we'll save this uh, so here and at this very moment i realized that we missed a single thing here so let me copy this and i am sure you also have realized that so after email we will say what is the best day and time for the appointment to you okay so we will ask the date and time and then we will uh, then we will ask for a note and then we'll follow the same path i missed that let me save this okay so we will say that uh, what is the best day and time for you so after providing the name we'll go to capturing email let me save this Yeah, when I hit plus, I'll say user uh, provides email. We will await for the email, and we will await then uh, for date and time. Okay, and I'll say only leave for one context, and the email is let's say user says uh, my email is raj at gmail dot com. uh it is raj at gmail dot com raj at gmail dot com email is raj at gmail dot com and we will respond with this what is the best day and time for the appointment to you and you can see here the system doesn't recognize that this is an email entity so we'll mark it like this okay and finally this one okay and you can see the email is there uh, let me save this so we are here then uh user here will provide the time let's say tomorrow at 5 pm okay so we will create a new intent uh yeah let's say user provides date and time so we will await date and time and then we will await for the note 
so await for note but you know before we await for note we need a confirmation from the user that they want to provide a note or not so instead that we will do that await note action and that will leave for obviously one lifespan so the user may say tomorrow at 5 pm i think next friday at 4 pm let's say maybe tomorrow at 5 pm let's say how about today 6 pm let's say uh, so let's let's keep these fours so you can see we capture the date time this is the system default date and time and we will ask uh, is there a note that you want to add so let me save this yeah so when i hit enter so yeah so let's create a new one let's say uh, confirm note so await note action and then now we will await the note okay so that means we are here user has confirmed that they want to provide a note then in that case we will await for note otherwise we will not await for the note so await for note and as you can understand the note can be anything so i'll just provide a single training phrase any and i'll mark with any system entity so you know when you mark with anything any system entity it will say they try to avoid using system any to annotate the entire phrase uh, use fallback intents instead but that's totally fine uh, so that means user can you know write anything here now once user writes uh, the note will say that uh, thank you uh, your appointment is scheduled is there anything i can help you with and uh, okay i'm not sure yeah so is there a note uh, when user confirms that uh, yeah my bad here uh, we need to write like yes uh, yeah sure i have a note okay yeah i want to provide a note for example so when user says this thing we'll say please provide the note okay and i missed that here as well so when user says yes instead of this we will say uh, please provide the note okay and once user provides the note okay once user provides the note we will yeah we will confirm the booking okay and here i'll say user note okay so let me save this and yeah we are at confirm note and we said please provide a note let me save this and uh, finally we will create a uh, user provides note let's await for the await note and once user provides the note 
we will await xn uh, let's say await um, further help xn okay and let's the lifespan be one now we will mark this with any okay okay and we will now say thank you your booking is confirmed yeah thank you your booking is confirmed stuff like that but i'm i have a doubt that what we did in the user uh user uh provides note await note but here in the user provides date and time i am not sure await note action and there is yeah confirm note my bad confirm note yeah i missed await hyphen note okay so that means we need to make sure we set the context so that this can be fired now let's go and you know test the part this 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 part okay uh, let me go to ml setting and hit train once in case it missed the training you can see the agent training is started so now i'll say hi uh, how are you doing so i'll say uh, schedule an appointment sure uh, may i know your name let's say this is raj okay thank you raj i missed a spelling there typo uh, what's the best email to let's say uh, raj at gmail.com okay what is the best let's say two more tomorrow at 6 pm is there any let's say yes please so this is the meeting note thank you and meeting is uh, scheduled is there yeah so this works well so uh, now we just need these two parts so uh, let's say uh, deny note that means user denies uh, note action so in that case we will go for await further help action and here user can say no 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 note that is fine that is fine i don't have any note i guess these are enough so in case user says that i don't have any note we will confirm the appointment for the user let me save this yeah and we will can create two new uh, confirm further action and deny further action so i'll say confirm further action and will user will say yeah yes uh, yeah i need help yes uh, yeah yes was there already i need help i do need help yeah and once they do that i will say how can i assist you today okay so let me copy this how uh, 
how can i assist you today okay so let me save this and in case so now we are at here so in case uh, user say deny deny uh, further action for that we need to await the further action and in case they deny the further action let's say no no i am i am good uh, i am fine no thanks so when user says no they don't need further action we will say thank you have a nice day ahead and here we will say thank you have a nice day ahead let me save this so finally we have completed our agent with all the things that we need and let's test the working end to end so we have tested the uh, this this path this confirm path let's do with the other way around let's say hi and let's say schedule an appointment let's say i am this is raj let's provide the email address let's say tomorrow 5 pm uh, let's say this time let's say no note thank you your appointment is scheduled is there anything let's say yes then it will say uh, how can i assist you today so i guess the, the all the intent are working in a way that we want it to work now let's work on the back end part where we write uh, code so that when user provides a note or user uh, denies the note providing path then we will set the you know event into google calendar and uh, before we move forward i would like to uh, self promote two things uh, first i have a community about chatbots on nas.io and the name of the community is learn everything about chatbots the link to join this community is in the description of this video and through this community you can get updated with all the latest news about chatbots i do free sessions on this community to help you learn and understand different concept of chatbot so you can you know join this community for free and connect with me anytime finally i have a course on google dialog flow essential itself called master google dialog flow build smart chatbots on udemy so you can buy this course if you like to you know learn and understand everything in greater details so without uh, further ado let's move into the code part so you can see here i have my visual studio code and here i have a dot env file which is a replication of this the dot env dot example file where i have port a credential and calendar id now i hope you remember that we have copied the calendar id at a safe place so you paste the calendar id here next uh, we have the service account json file copy the content and paste the content in a single line so when you when you will paste the content here uh, it will feel like something this then you know you should uh, convert the multi line into single line because you know this is the way it works best because uh, the uh, private key is sometimes uh, you know formatted in a way that you know uh, keeping multi line of the string uh, causes an issue so you need to do this uh, once we have these things ready the environment is ready we are ready to set up so here i have opened the terminal and in the terminal the first thing i'll do is that npm init 
hyphen y so this will create a package dot json file and inside that there is nothing at this point uh, let's move this to server uh, slash index dot js that means my main file is here under uh, SR src index dot js let's save this and i'll create a folder called src under that i'll create a file called index dot ts and i'm not sure here yeah index dot ts let's save this now let's first add few dependencies that we need so let's install npm install express uh, this will be the framework for our server then dot env to read the environment files further uh, we will need some type scripts so for that i'll say uh, npm install hyphen d uh, those are types dot env then at the rate uh, types express uh, we will need ts hyphen node and at the rate uh, types hyphen node and type script itself meanwhile let's start uh, working on our index dot ts so what we'll do is that we will say import uh, express then express uh, itself then request and then response from express okay so we we need these things in order to uh, build the server and i hope we'll uh, need next uh, function as well okay finally we'll say uh, import uh, dot env from dot env so that we can read the environment file very easily then we will create uh, first let dot env dot config okay that means read the env file then we create our app uh, that will be const app and it will be type of express and that will be express finally let's do some um, settings so app dot use express dot json so that you know incoming request convert that into the body into json then app dot use express dot uh, url encoded okay url encoded so that we can have the encoded parameters as well and then finally we will use a small you know function where we accept the request as a request we will send a response as a response and we will further have a next which is a next function just to make sure uh, you know just to log everything that you know incoming to our uh, server and we'll say that console dot log um, we'll say path request dot path um, i think this should be small request dot path with uh, the method request 
dot method so we'll just see that in the terminal that this path with this method was called and then we will just pass the request to the next function and then let's say const uh, pot which will be of type string we will say process dot uh, env dot pot okay and i'm not sure yeah so we can do this as well uh, 5000 but that will be a type of string and i'm not sure why okay i'm not sure we installed this or not let's make sure we install it yeah so process dot env uh, dot port and let's do now uh, app dot listen to the port and the function my bad it is app we will say that console.log server is running at uh, http call on uh, Yeah, I need to use the tick. Okay, so I think the code is now set up for the basic application, and we can uh, write few things so that the application will be running smoothly. So we'll write few script like start. Uh, development and build so the start is run first we need to run the build so that it has the this uh, file and for development we can use nodemon src index.ts let me save this and we'll say npm run dev hopefully yeah it shows fail to start executive not found uh, i'm not sure i have installed those things correctly or not oh type uh, node yeah you can see now everything is installed uh, we can say npm run dev respawn say okay respawn say let's save this and yeah you can see the server is running so we can go to our browser and we'll say at port 5000 and yeah it's okay that we you know did not get anything cause we did not have return anything so what i'll say app dot get request as request response as response and we will fire this function and we will response dot send status let's say 200 at this point and let me save this so you can see here we got the console very beautiful this console that path this path with the method get was called and if we go back here and refresh this you will see that we got okay response that means the server is running successfully now let's start uh, structuring this application so i'll say 
routes and inside that i'll say let's say health route dot ts and here i'll use this part and i will say that uh, uh, import what i want to import i want to import router request and response a from express okay then i want to create a router const router equals to router okay and then i'll say router dot get and i'll say export default router so that means here we'll say app dot use for all the home route or for let's say all the home route we'll say health route router okay and let's import it so it's saying no default import so we'll say import health router from uh, routes health route okay and if now i save this you will see the application is running and uh, in case we go here and refresh this we'll still see that okay response that means our application is uh, working the base application is working now let's create a route so that we can handle dialog flow request so for that i'll create dialog flow route dot ts and here i will copy all the code and paste all the code dialog flow will send a post request okay and so let's first import it here as well so let me save this and i'll say import dialog flow router from routes and dialog flow route and we will say here that app dot use so let's say for all dialog flow request use dialog flow router okay and here we will say that uh, my route name is webhook uh, you can you know choose empty route as well and instead of let's let's first test this itself so if we if we go here and go to dialog flow now you will be wondering that our application is running on our local host and how dialog flow will access our application so for that you need a tool called ng rock you can download it it is available for linux windows and mac once you download it you need to sign up and you know you need to do a authentication step it is all written on their website so once you do that step you need to uh, open a terminal okay open a terminal and you need to say ng rock http uh, 5000 make sure you run ng rock on the same port your application is running and you hit enter you will receive this kind of url and if you open this you will see the okay response that means now our local host is exposed to internet i will copy this i'll go back here and under fulfillment section 
I will provide the oh my bad it did not copy for the first time and I'll provide this followed by dialog flow followed by webhook so if you see here we have dialog flow followed by webhook and that is why we have written dialog flow and webhook let me save this and if you go to intents just for testing purpose i'll go to default welcome intent i will remove all of these and under fulfillment section i'll enable the fulfillment i'll save this and when i say hi hopefully we will not receive any response okay but if i go to this diagnostic info you can see that indeed a request was sent from dialog flow to our application and we sent okay and if you go to fulfillment status it says that failed to parse webhook json response so that means whatever we sent from our node.js express typescript application was received by dialog flow but dialog flow wasn't able to you know parse it so let's see how dialog flow understand webhook response so we'll say dialog flow uh, web hook response format and if we come here so you can see here this is the request that we will receive and uh, i'm not sure here so i guess this is not the right one i guess this should be the right one yeah so this is the request body and this is the response that you need to send uh, let's choose v3 beta 1 and oh this is for cx uh, i'm not sure is there um, dialog flow es okay this should be the one this is the request part but i'm not sure why i'm not able to get the response part yeah so okay uh, this should be the format i guess we are looking for uh, let me close this so here it says that uh, so this is just a uh, payload so this is sample but we are not looking for this we are looking for fulfillment messages okay let's do one thing that's fine totally fine i was trying to you know help you understand and get the perfect documentation but that's totally fine so what what we will do is that uh, we will you know we will send a sample response from uh, our back end and for that what we'll do that instead of doing this i'll say const let's say full fill meant messages full fill meant messages uh, equals to let's say uh, an object that has uh, a text let's say and this text has again a property text and this will be a list of string and we'll say from the webhook okay and what we'll do is a send uh, response dot send and we will send this uh, fulfillment 
messages and let's see so yeah the application is reloaded now let's go back to the dialog flow and let's start with hi and it again says that yeah we send those things and but we were not able to i guess uh, yeah fulfillment message is my bad so we need um, we need full um, we need to wrap this in an object with a key fulfillment messages now if we go back to dialog flow this should work if i say hi again again it's not uh, yeah fulfillment messages is there expected oh expected an array so fulfillment messages is not an object but it's an array so if it's an array then it should have mm, let me figure this out uh, very quickly why we are not um, let me figure this out very quickly what's the issue okay i guess now i have figured out the correct documentation and i will copy this and so you can see we need to send this kind of response from our webhook and i also figured out the problem here first i'll create a readme.md file and i'll say uh dialog flow webhook document dialog flow this is the url okay let me save this so here you can see a fulfillment message is so we need to send an object that object must have a property called fulfillment messages that should be a list of messages and these messages must be objects so now this should work you can see uh, this is reloaded and if i come here and go to dialog flow and again send hi fingers crossed hopefully we will receive yeah from the web hook so now this works let me close this and we'll say uh, hi how can i help you today and let me save this so if we look here into our intents there are two points where we want to create this uh, appointment into our google calendar the two points are this user provides note so that means all the things are provided or user deny note so user denied the note and when we look here we will we are saying that thank you your appointment is scheduled so at this two point we need to uh, create the uh, appointment so in order to you know use these variables uh, date and time email name and note to any of this uh, deny note or user provides note we need to create a uh, session variable so that all these parameters are stored into the session variable and for that we need to create a session variable into user wants to schedule an appointment and here i'll say session hyphen wars and the lifespan will be let's say 50 okay and now you see here what happens when i say hi and when i say schedule an appointment you can see session var is there 
let's say I, my name is Raj and my email is this I want to come tomorrow and let's say yes and let's say this is the meeting note and now this intent file so at this intent we want all of the previous information to create the meeting and if I go to diagnostic info and if I go to this output context and here you will see session var and you will see all the parameters here so we will extract these parameter on our webhook and then create the uh, google calendar event so let's start working on our application so now we have all of these things ready so let's uh, you know create create a code piece of code with which we will able to you know write um, event into google calendar i'll say create a utils folder and here i'll create a file called calendar services dot ts and here i'll for simplicity paste few lines of code you can see we first import few things uh, then these are the you know uh, types for the credential that we will read uh, this is our event details type summary description start time now we'll do some you know things uh, get the access to the calendar create a calendar object and then you know create an event summary uh, description start and uh, start time end time uh, i'll change this to asia kolkata here um, asia kolkata uh, we will create the event into the google calendar uh, return the event data and if something goes wrong we throw an error so for these uh, these lines of code to work we need to add few dependencies and for that we will add npm install google apis movement hyphen time zone then at the rate i guess uh, it is at the rate yeah it is at the rate um, I guess yeah so let's see with this npm install uh, moment time zone and things like that okay so yeah all went well and uh, we have installed the things that are needed but you see we are reading the environment variables through this function so let me very quickly create a function called load environment variables and here i'll create a file called utils.ts and there i will paste this and for it to work we need to import import uh, dot env from dot env and uh, we will say dot env dot config okay and to read the dot env file we will need to import fs from file system so you can see we now have uh, file to read the environment variables and so here what we will do is that we have environment variables and we have utils so what i'm saying is that from utils import load environment variables okay so this seems to be working uh, there is no error though we haven't tested it but we will test it when 
we need it then you know we need these this this function or this kind of function uh, where we you know just provide the text and it will format our text into the way dialog flow understand so that uh, we will create a function for it okay and let's say uh, there is a function i already have written so what we will do is that uh, we say a generate response object it will receive messages output context and it will return a response object that dialog flow will understand and for that i will create some types here since uh, this thing is greatly type dependent so i'll create few types so we have uh, fulfillment messages and we don't need platform at this point because we have uh, no platform but in case you have platform like facebook or telegram you can use that output context this uh, content context types uh, query result uh, dialog flow request types and things like that and here i'll remove this as well so uh, if you see here we have this generate dialog flow response let me save this and here instead of doing this part i'll say response dot send i'll say generate uh, response object it will take uh, messages so i'll say from the webhook okay and let's say one more message and let's try this uh, for that npm run dev okay mm, so in order to you know not all the time you know go through the same conversation again and again what i'll do is that i will open a tool called insomnia Uh, this tool will help us fire a request same as you know replicating the action of dialog flow so i have already written a request where i throw a post request on dialog flow webhook and just we need to copy the request that dialog flow will send so in the diagnostic info uh, yeah i think uh, for that Uh, just we need to do one more action is that here user provides note instead of this response we need to enable the web hook and save this so now when i say hi then i'll say schedule an appointment uh, this is raj let's say raj at gmail.com oh my bad let's say hi schedule an appointment so this is raj uh, raj at gmail.com tomorrow and let's say yes i have meeting notes and provide the note let's say this is the meeting note yeah you see from the webhook and one more message came from obviously uh, the webhook and here you can see we have the fulfillment request so what i'll do is that i'll copy this and then i'll open this api testing tool and in the body i'll paste the content so that means when i fire this we see this response which was the same that we saw on google dialog flow so you know in this way we avoid ourselves uh, writing or you know going through the same conversation again and again on dialog flow now let's look here and work a bit so uh, before we move forward what i'll do is that here under user provide note i'll set an action let's say schedule appointment so from this action i'll understand 
that what I need to do on the back end. So let's come back to the back end. And uh, yeah. So uh, let's do one thing here in the webhook. Let's first instead of doing this very simple way, we will say that first let's grab the action. Okay. And once we grab the action, we will start with an empty response data. We will see if the create event uh, we have schedule appointment. We have this schedule appointment as our action name. So if we see that this action name is there, then call this function and you know, uh, send whatever came from the dialog flow back to dialog flow. And if uh, there is no action, then you know, we will say that you know, the action you are passing from dialog flow, I don't have any handler for that. So in order to create this, I will create a new folder, let's say controllers. And I'll create a new file, let's say, uh, schedule, schedule appointment dot ts. So here, we will receive the request, whatever incoming, and we will process that. And then we will call our calendar service to schedule the appointment. So here under uh, this part, let's create a new function. Uh, let's say I'll call it handle schedule appointment and we'll call this We'll go here, we'll paste this and yeah, yeah, no, it is not there. And request, request. Yeah, we need to export this. Export default this part. So if I come here and quick fix, you can see we have all the things gone now and in order to make this await we'll say asynchronous and global this request mm, yeah request it's it's totally fine and for that let's say from uh, import request from express yeah now since you understand that uh, we have these uh, session vars, session parameters, these parameters we need to extract uh, from this request. So in order to do that, what I'll do is that I will create a new function called extract session vars into this util dos ts okay extract session wires so it will uh, receive a, a parameter and it will you know extract the session wires and it will return back the session wires to us so here let me import that as well okay uh, event detail type is a type and create event we have yeah create event so that will be from a calendar services so you can see here now all the things seems to be working so here from this session vars let's first print the session vars before we do anything so i'll say console session vars 
and you can see that we are sending whatever message we have set in the dialog flow this means that whatever message coming from dialog flow just uh, you know send as it is and for that let's say console dot log json dot stringify request dot body and then null uh, let's say two okay so let's taste uh, the dialog flow so here schedule appointment and let's set here uh, the response uh, okay uh, thank you for your appointment uh, is scheduled is there anything i can help you with let's save this and um, let's taste this so i'll say hi okay this is raj oh my bad hi then schedule appointment then this is Raj. Then Raj at gmail.com. Then tomorrow 6 p.m. And let's say yes, I want to add something. And let's say this is the meeting note. Okay, so you see, we just received the same thing. Thank you. Your appointment is scheduled. Is there anything else? Uh, anything I can help you with and if you go to this diagnostic info yeah this is the fulfillment response we sent back and you can check the status webhook execution successful so that means uh, this worked this part worked and if you see here uh, if you see here this is the body and under that we have accent name a parameter this was the last parameter and this was the response uh, and if you go to output context that is uh, session wars okay and under session wars everything is under parameter everything is there person email date and time and any so let's uh, do few things now the first uh, <coughs> instead of uh, this any i will say note I will save this okay I will save this and let's finally finish the webhook backend so if we go here and let's uncomment all of this so now you can see that we have email person dot name uh, date time date time uh, let's modify this a bit as well so here date time let's say date underscore time okay then uh, any we have changed this to note so let's extract all of these things so under session vars we'll see set that new appointment for person dot name okay and under description we will see that um, let's say we will let's just use all the variables uh, email then um, date time we know don't need date time and let's say note uh, session was dot note and this question means the property may not be there okay so we can see that everything seems working uh, everything is there there is no error at this point so let's test the same thing end to end so yeah and meanwhile let me go to calendar and tomorrow will be eight so we'll see if something comes up here so finally here mm, i'll say hi then schedule an appointment uh, this is raj 
raj at uh, gmail.com then tomorrow 6 p.m i will say yes and then i'll say this is the meeting note and you will see that thank you for your appointment is scheduled and i think uh, we have received some error it's saying that okay reading dead time yeah exactly so that is yeah so this part is um, yeah date time date time so if you see here uh, this date time has a pro uh, yeah so I'm not sure where it went uh, yeah so this is the date time so date time has uh, date time property so that's why we need to make sure it is there so this is date time let me save this and let's make sure that under fulfillment request under session var everything was there so still there was this date time date time but maybe it should reflect now so now instead of you know going through the same uh, conversation again what i'll do is that i will instead fire a request so i'll paste everything here and you can see this is a date time but i'll chain to underscore because this is what we have set so when i hit enter we'll receive the response and if i go back here oh it says cannot read the property of so here under fulfillment section we have date time date time i'm not sure why there are two date time but let me remove this i will see what what is coming from dialog flow so this date time has this date time so i'll send this now and if we go back here under this part still we are facing the same issue i'm not sure let's just console dot log the session wars and let's see this so let me fire the request again okay let okay now it started so let me fire the request again okay now yeah so this where this where the uh, yeah this where the parameters okay but it says that we were not able to uh create the appointment because invalid time zone definition for end time so if i come here oh ac is kolkata ac or kolkata let me save this now hopefully uh let it start yeah it started let me fire the request yeah it, i think yeah it, okay now you can see the event is created and if i go to uh, this part and go to calendar yeah and you can see we have event and these are the things so i guess this worked and to and now here uh, in case user denies note okay in case user denies note then we will say note at the rate system dot any note and we will provide a default value no note is set okay and let me make sure that i have set it correctly Mm, let's see other parameters how they are 
okay yeah it is the same way okay so if i go to uh, this deny note yeah it is there okay so now in case we test it using denying the note uh, and here we can set the schedule appointment and i'll enable the fulfillment save this okay let me save this okay let's reset the context and i'll say hi okay i'll say schedule an appointment i'll say this is raj uh, i'll say raj at gmail.com in this let's say tomorrow 6 pm uh, let's say no so when i say no it will come here create the appointment and then you know send a response to dialog flow so when i say no you can see thank you and if we literally see here we can see another event is created and if we go to calendar there will be two events okay and you can see there is no note set now you know the further scope of this whole tutorial is to make sure you check the perfect you know time and see that you know there are no certain like for example three or more events are set otherwise you say that hey we are booked uh, choose another time the one thing is that second thing is that uh, if you know you uh, start the appointment flow and you are asking name but the user is saying that who are you okay so it will say i missed that but now if i say uh, schedule an appointment again it will go to uh, asking my name and i'll provide that this is raj okay now again if i ask who are you so it will say what was that but now the flow has lost itself so if i say schedule an appointment it will ask what is your name so you know from back end you can check what parameters are filled and you know then instead of asking the parameter again you can move to the next parameter so this is how it works and if let's say if i'm not sure i can manage it or not but i'll surely give it a shot so what we will do is that um, we will try to deploy this application on a server so i'll first create a git ignore file and i'll say ignore node uh, node modules uh, ignore dot env file uh, ignore this file as well then ignore package dot json file i often not push this on the server yeah so once do that i'll first initialize the github repository let's say first commit okay okay publish the branch to public now what i'll do is that i'll go to uh, render.com i'll go to my dashboard uh, let's log in into it using my gmail account so i have to instance running i'll say web service okay i'll choose uh, build and deploy from a git repository so i already have connected my git repository to this uh, application yeah so here i'll select the repository we just recently created then i'll say let's say appointment scheduler youtube demo uh, node main let's say i'll choose singapore because that's the nearest uh, 
yeah it seems this is the root directory and and yarn install and node src index.ts that seems correct uh, i'll choose free one and then i'll add you know environment variables from the file i have so let me copy this i'll provide this yeah it is there add variables you can see the variables are there and i'll hit deploy service and hopefully in a minute or two this application will be deployed uh, meanwhile let me show you this part as well so this is the part where you can learn more about the request and response what you will receive in a request from dialogflow and what should you uh, respond with so these are the request parameter and this should be response so in case you want to you know uh, send different kinds of uh, responses you can use payload and you know this uh, rich response section as well okay uh, you can set output context set parameter change parameters and things like that uh, you can set you know follow up in uh, input event and stuff like that so these are the few things that you can play around with and here if we come back it says that deploying but let's say build was successful so i guess it should work out of the box mm. okay so yeah uh, meanwhile let me download this uh, agent as well so that you can have this as a reference i'll export it as a zip file yeah and uh, yeah let me push this as well okay so i'll push it added agent zip file and i'll save this so what you can do is that uh, in case you face any issue uh, you go to restore select the zip file and you need to write restore here and once you do that you will see that it's working and the application failed because uh, use the mjs extension outside module i'm not sure why i'm facing this issue but you know i'll i'll figure this out but i guess uh, at this point uh, this is it and uh, surely i'll look into this and try to you know record another video in which i can deploy the same application on the server so i guess uh, this is it uh, from my side uh, i hope that you have gained some knowledge and now you are able to you know build the application you understand dialog flow better you understand how to build the web hook for it as well and if you do so please consider subscribing to my channel that support is you know highly appreciated uh, again thank you for watching peace